guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. You know, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on TikTok, anybody that calls out women for their bad actions, uh, most of the time by other women are called haters or incels or, I don't know, virgins or wh whatever they come up with today uh, to shame guys for calling women out for their bad actions. But you know what's funny? Women today are like people that are playing poker except instead of hiding their cards from everybody else, they show everybody else their cards and hide it from themselves. What do I mean by that? I mean, like if this is, this is your hand in poker, normally you keep it facing you and no one else knows what you hand have. These women are playing poker like this. You can see what, what's in their hand and they can't. And, and that's what's ironic about all of this. And here's another, we're going to use my favorite human in the world when it comes to bad decisions in life, Yana Hawking. Dating coach Yana Hawking and her friends, they all discover something. They discover the wall. They discover that the men that they really want are dating younger or dating other women. And that even though these great catches are still available at the tender age of 40 something, they're being bypassed. And then Yana discovers, hey, we're all sleeping with and dating the same guys. It's because they're dating the top five or 10 percenters, not dating them, sleeping with them. And those guys are just going around sleeping with all of them and they're never going to settle down. So I got two stories by Yana today that we're going to go over. Oh, the sweet, sweet irony. Uh, from the Daily Mail, the insane reason why all of these hot, successful women are single. Maybe it's because they're all well into their 40s. Um, but who cares if they're successful? Most men don't. They want hot. They want young. But you're not so young anymore. Yana Hawking has a huge amount of friends who are catches, yet they're single. She says it's because they've set their standards for men that are too high. Uh, I got a button for that. I got a button for that. Where is it? Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her, Johnny? No kidding. We've been telling you this now for years and years and years. Uh, they say, maybe my Mr. Wright is trying to herd sheep into a shearing shed, she says. Uh, she says, the dating world is a, in a state of disarray. Yes, it is. I came to this conclusion last weekend after I invited my girlfriends over for a glass of champagne before a fancy brunch at Iceberg's. As I looked around my lounge room, I realized all my friends are absolute catches. Not only are they gorgeous, but they've got great jobs, doesn't matter, comfortable wages, doesn't matter, and are ridiculously good company. And it's not just this group of girlfriends. I have at least two other groups, and they're all in the same boat, and yet they're all single. Oh, what could be, what could be causing this? Now, let's pause for a second. I know all of you guys... Anytime I say, oh, she's not bad looking, I get a bunch of hate in the comments. Look, there's lots of guys out there that would look at these women and say, hey, you know something? They're not fat. They are not like caked in makeup. And for 40 years old or 45 years old or whatever they are, they're not bad looking. I think that's pretty fair to say. Uh, now, if you're a 28 year old dude, you'd be like, nah, man. But if you're a 50 year old guy and you're looking at these women like, hey, you know, they're between five and 10 years younger than me. They're not bad looking. Uh, they're an option for dating, except they're not. Because if you look at these women and say, I would like to have a relationship, these women don't want you because you're not the top five and 10 percenter. You're a normal average guy. That's the irony of this. And then these women are like, oh, but I have real life experiences. Oh, I'm a great companion and I have great conversations. Oh, I have a good income. None of that matters to a man. What matters to a man is age, fertility, beauty, youth, and we're kind of done, and respect and not lying. Uh, she says, what we're after is anything too crazy. A nice guy, nope. That's not what they, uh, here, I got another button. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so, sir. They are not interested in nice guys. They don't want nice guys. Nice guys are boring. They've had thousands, tens of thousands of opportunities with nice guys. They want the top five percenters and they want them for themselves and they don't want to get played over by the five percenters. But the problem is the five percenters do not want them for keeps. They want them as rentals. They say a nice guy who is well put together. Uh, let's see. Well put together. We know what that means. That means this. Um, 
uh, emotional intelligence, a decent job. It's not decent. They don't want a plumber is a decent job and is nice to women and dogs, definitely dogs. So where are these guys? Well, my original thought was, oh, I know they're chasing after the girls in their 20s. Correct. I asked one guy in my office uh, what he got up to this weekend, and he said that his girlfriend's 21st birthday, he's 37. He was complaining about how immature her friends were and the lack of nice wines to choose from at the boat cruise they were on. I thought, well, why the heck are you dating a 21-year-old? I'll tell you why. Because she's 21, and she's fun, and she doesn't have as much baggage, and she's probably hot, and he gets to teach her things and everything. You know, he's an interesting guy to her. And she's not opinionated and loudmouthed and a boss bitch. That's why. She says, yes, it's horrendously judgmental of me. But seriously, why do they talk about, uh, what do they talk about when not going uh, at it like rabbits? Um, what do, okay, let's, let's really iron this down. What do all women talk about? They talk about people or their friends or social things that men don't care about. When was the last time you had a heated, like, lengthy debate about science or about politics or about uh, world events or history. You know, I had a buddy of mine, his name is Matt, and we were best, best friends. And when we went out to lunch, we'd sit down and we would have talks about, like he'd just say something about, hey, did you see the new telescope they just launched uh, It's that's looking into deep space? And I, oh, yeah, man, I saw that. They had a problem with a mirror and they had to fix it. Oh, have you seen some of these pictures of the of the galaxies? Like in, in a one inch square of the night sky, you can see tens of thousands of galaxies. And we go on these tangents. And then the next day at lunch, we're talking about tractors. And the next day, we're talking about motorcycles. We've had thousands of conversations about interesting topics. When was the last time you can really sit down and talk to a woman like that? You can't because they don't have interest in the same things. So we don't need to have lengthy, long conversations about these things because that's not what we have women for. We have guy friends for that. What do we have women for? Hey, let's go get a bite to eat. Hey, let's maybe go out for a drink. Hey, let's go have some fun in the sack. And you, yeah, we can hang out and be friends and things like that. But most of the time, guys don't have the same hobbies as women. So what do they do when not going at it like rabbits? He's probably saying like, I'll talk to you another time. I'm going to go do something else. And again, if you look at these, if you look at these ladies, they're they're not unattractive, but they are creeping up in age. I guarantee you every one of them was way hotter at 22 than 44. And now what do they come with? Well, now they they don't look as pretty, and now they have wrinkles, and now gravity is taking over, and now they're opinionated. And 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 now they have body counts, and there's nothing they've gained nothing that men want. They say, I've been thinking for quite a while that the reason we're all single is because my gorgeous friends and I are getting passed over by the blokes we fancy because we're too old. In fact, it is safe to assume we're not even registering on many guys our age dating apps because they've set their age limits from 20 to, at a scrape, 30 years old. Correct. Exactly right. And she had no problems with this when she was the girl in the 20 to 30 year old range. Yana has talked about banging hockey players and banging, you know, sports stars and hot guys and tall guys and masculine guys. She had no problems dating these guys for a weekend, getting her back blown out for the weekend. But now she's upset because she's ready to settle down because like we always say, her options are starting to run thin. The guys that she wants are still going for the Yana Hawkins, they're, but they're going to the Yana Hawking of 25 and 27 because they can. And, and in the next story I'm going to be reading by Yana herself, they even tell you that's what's happening. She said, I've been thinking for quite a while. Uh, I read that. Uh, isn't it wild? And yes, I'm very much expecting my Instagram DMs to be filled with messages from men ranting on about the fact that I shouldn't have put my career before men and babies and that I'm too picky. Oh, and my favorite, I've hit a wall. Side note, why do so many men love using the terms, you've hit a wall? It's always from some hairy, balding bloke who scratches his nuts in social settings. Okay, mate. First of all, I'm not hairy. Second of all, I am bald. And third, I don't scratch my balls or my nuts in social settings. I scratch my nuts everywhere, including social settings. 
Um, here's why. Here's why. Because it's true. The wall that women have hit, at, and depending on how well they take care of themselves between the ages of 40 and 50, it, it's not the wall of you're no longer attractive. It, it, you know, again, you ask most men, do you think these women are attractive? Most men, again, would say, yeah, I think so. She's got a lovely smile. She's kind of got this mysterious thing going with uh, the, uh, what is it, L. McPherson little mole thing. Uh, bjana has got a pretty good rack on or whatever. Most guys would say, yeah, they're attractive. Okay, would you date them? Well, most average guys would say, well, yeah, you know, they're within a couple of years of me, sure. But why don't these men date them? Because they don't want those men. They want the top dogs. That's what it's talk about hitting the wall. Is you've hit, you've now hit the speed limit. The men that that you want don't want you. That's the wall. It's not that your looks have gone to hell. It's it's that the young and the fertile and the perky is gone. Uh, she says, I beg to differ, my dear cranky gents. I've never felt more comfortable in my skin. I don't want children. I've adored every moment chasing after a career I want. But there has to be more valid reason why all my girlfriends and I are single than just some shallow dudes who want pretty young things on their arm. No, that's really all it is. Because the people that want something meaningful, the men that want something meaningful and to be in love and have a girlfriend don't want a woman with a high body count. Or they don't want a woman that's got that's a career boss girl and gives them attitude. They want someone that's sweet and feminine. See, we keep saying we like the traditional traditional women, and then women say, but we're not traditional, so love us the way we are. And men keep saying, no, I'll have fun with you, I'll sleep with you, but I'm not taking you home to mom. I'm not making something serious about it. We keep telling them, and they keep and they like refuse to listen. And that's why I say it's like playing poker, except she shows her hand to everybody and can't see it herself. We keep telling you this, and she's like, you're just butthurt, bald, hairy men that scratch their nuts in social settings. What, we'll, we, we need to know the real truth. And we were literally sitting here going, here's the real truth. And they say, shut up. <laughs> you can't make it up. So she says, um, after, so after some more pondering, I began to think that perhaps the issue is that I and my friends have paved out lives we absolutely adore. If we're going to add a man to our life, then they must be on the same level or higher. You can't detract. You must add to my life. That, my friends, is hypergamy. She only wants to date up. She says it herself. I have a great life. You need to make my great life better. You need to add. You must be higher. Women refuse to date down. So the men that they want are higher status. Higher status men do not have to sleep with the high body count, uh, attitude, successful career women. I mean, they will sleep with them, but they certainly don't have to settle down with them. She says, and this was begging, beginning to feel a little more on the money, especially when I floated it to a bunch of women at work meeting yesterday. Then I stumbled across a book that proved this theory in a way, stating that there's a genuine man deficit in place right now for career women. Author John Berger wrote a, a book. It's called Datanomics, how dating became lopsided numbers game. In it, he details why there are so many men, uh, so many women struggling to find Mr. Right, and it all comes down to numbers saying it's not women's fault, it's the demographics. Well, it is women's fault because they won't look outside of the demographics. She says, according to Berger, the problem with women living in big cities right now is there are far more university, university graduated women than men. He said that if women, act would, uh, if, if women would like a man who's on the same education level, it will be a struggle. And we've talked about this. Universities have so many scholarships, and they're very quick to give women good scores and, and minorities better scores. And, and they're really pushing against, like, the, your average white dude. Guys can't get the scholarships. Guys, and I specifically talk about white because there are programs for minorities and programs for women and programs for the LGHD TV. But there's, there's not programs for white dudes anymore because you're white and you're man, so you're evil and you're straight and you're evil. That's where they've gone with this. So, of course, 60, 58, 55% uh, percent of, of men in the country are white, so of course there's going to be a lot of fewer guys to choose from. 
And that's the demographics you need to look at. So, so again, they're, they're not willing to look at the blue collar guy that might be a great guy that might feel lucky to get a girl that looks like this with a good pair, a couple of hams, even in her forties, because they don't see those men. She said, and the men who are college graduated are more likely to play the field and delay marriage because there are so many women in oversupply for them to choose from. Correct. And Yana, you are one of those women. Your friends are those women. The younger women are those women. She says, he said the solution is for women to be more open-minded about who they're willing to date. And here's a plot twist for you. I think he's right. For so long, I've ranted about my refusal to loosen my standards or settle for any old bloke. See, if he's not a tear up from her, she's settling. If he's not six feet tall, she's settling. If he's not muscular, she's settling. If he's not rich, she's settling. That's the way she sees this. And she refused to loosen her standards. She says, but, I, uh, but have I been going on dates with guys who are vastly different to me? No. She is a pretty woman. She is. To the right men. She's, she's maintained her weight well. She's got, you know, she wears outfits like this. She's definitely going to get attention from men. And these men are successful. These men are probably in suits. They probably make six figures a year. But they're not going to settle down with Yana. Because she's 40-something now. They're going to have their fun. She says, I tend to go for white collar. Sure, I dabbled with a few footy players in the past, but that was just for fun. Yes, so I go for white collar guys, but I've slept with footballers. I've played, I've slept with soccer players because they're hot. And, and I had my fun. Yes, exactly. Uh, she said, or... Um, Perhaps I should be dating guys who didn't go to uni or took up a trade. Here's an idea, a farmer. Maybe we're all single because we've only been sticking to what we know. Maybe Mr. Wright is currently trying to herd sheep into a shearing shed. I've been attempting to look for him in a fancy wine bar. Wrong place, Yana. So, so in the fine words of Taylor Swift, it's me, I'm the problem. It's me. Yes, you are correct. The girls, I have vowed to broaden our dating field and start uh, going to places outside of the city bu bubble. Can't hurt Wright. Okay, now, here's the date on this story. Here's on this date on this story. Four days ago. That would put this at October 22nd. This story came out. From Yana Hawking, October 26th, today. Four days later. From Yana Hawking. My friends and I found out we're split, we're spit sisters, and it's making our dating lives a mess. Now, what does that mean? It means they've all swapped spit and other fluids with the same men. Sh shocking. Last week, I was out to drinks with two newish girlfriends for a little cocktail uh, bonding session. Now, these are newish friends. She doesn't really know these ladies. Halfway through our drinks, my ex texted me out of the blue, probably for a hookup. So, of course, it came in up in conversation. As I read out his name, both of them laughed. Turns out all of us have had relations with this man. One of my friends shouted, oh, we're spit sisters. First of all, ew, whatever that is sounds a bit gnarly. And second of all, what the heck is a spit sister? Well, dear reader, according to Urban Dictionary, a spit sister is usually a friend and another friend, both female, that have hooked up with the same guy, but at different times. Yes, it would appear that all three of us were indeed spit sisters, and they're not the only ones I share a mutual spit with. I know, ooh, the term, I have quite a few in the sisterhood. And here's the same photo of friends. My brothers in Christ. This is exactly what we keep talking about and we keep saying is happening and we keep proving is happening and women are like, no, -uh, you're just butthurt losers. All these women are sleeping with the same dudes, all of them, because these dudes are probably tall, probably attractive, probably have money, are in the same social circles, going to the same clubs and the same bars and the same whatevers, 
And all the women go, oh, he's hot. I want to be with him. And so my dude sleeps with Yana. Then he sleeps with Miss Pink. Then he sleeps with Miss Brunette. Then he sleeps with another and another and another and another and another. And when any of them say, I want to be your girlfriend, he says, why would I settle down with 45-year-old Yana, who's got some wrinkles showing up here? I'll sleep with her. But why would I settle for her when uh, two nights later I can be banging this one? And two nights later I can be banging this one? And so on and so on and so on. Of course you're all sharing the same men. And then you wonder why. Why are we all single? Because all the men you keep sleeping with are going to be perpetually single. Why? Because they have options. They have tons and tons of options. If any of these girls, we'll take Miss Pink here because she's got a pretty smile. If this girl's uh, 36 years old and she goes to your average 45, 50-year-old guy, and, and she says, you know, I'm really looking for a serious relationship. And he says, I'm, you know, I'm a plumber. I make 50 grand a year. And she says, hey, I only got a couple of years left. I want to live in the countryside and raise goats and have your babies. That plumber would be like, hallelujah. She's kind of hot. She's 10 years younger than me. And it's, maybe it's not too late to have a family. I'm in. Boom. She's not single anymore. But she doesn't see that guy. That guy is invisible to her. Hence the, maybe we need to stop picking these top, top men and expand our horizons. But they're not expanding their horizons. They're all sleeping with the same men. Those men will never settle down because it's like Baskin and Robbins, the ice cream store. I got my vanilla. I got my strawberry. I got my chocolate. And then I got my Rocky Road and I got my mint. He, he, they get it all. She says, take for an example, the guy I went on a date with uh, last week, who I met on a dating app. He was halfway through telling a story about a recent overseas birthday trip when I connected the dots. I said, wait, do you know, insert her friend's name? He said, yeah. And I instantly felt a pang of doom. He was the guy she'd been complaining about a month ago when out of the blue, he suddenly went cold on her post overseas trip. Ah, uh, here I was spitting, uh, sitting opposite him on, him on a date. Awkward. Because this guy can just throw it out there and all it, he's got the worm on the hook and he throws it into the water and all the women are biting and he reels them in and he sleeps with them and he ghosts them and he dumps them and he moves on to another and another and another. And she's another fish in the pond. She says, oh, and I don't even get me started on the famous guy who'd been chatting me up in my DMs recently. He suddenly did a plot twist and asked my friend out after he saw her in some of my pics and decided she was a better option. I'm ashamed to say the rejection hit my frag fragile ego hard. But here's the thing. Did her friend go out with him? Did her friend sleep with him? Probably. Probably because if her friend blew him off, she'd be like, oh, loser. But instead, she says, my ego got hit hard. Why? Because she's because she realizes, Yana realizes her friend is probably younger and hotter than she is. And so she got left on red while this dude went out and got something different. But guess what? It's He's not just doing it with Yana. He's not just doing it with her friend. He's doing it with every woman he meets. Hit it. Quit it. Hit it. Quit it. Screw, nut, bolt. He's doing the hardware store. And so, you know something? You can blame that guy and call him a bad guy. But who's the bad guy? The guy that's going out there and saying, I just want to sleep with a bunch of women? Or the women that aren't vetting him and they're saying, hey, he's a hot guy. I'm going to sleep with him. And, you know, if I get him as a boyfriend, great. If not, forget it. If all those women stop giving up the punani for, for basically nothing then this guy would actually have to settle for a woman before he got laid. But it's the women that make it easy access. Of course he doesn't have to settle for anybody. He can just go out and have his fun over and over and over again. And ask yourself this, honestly, you're a, you're a 30 to 45 or 50-year-old guy. You're good looking. You know you're good looking. Women trip over themselves for you, whether it's average woman up to like an eight or a nine. You may have to work for the nines or the tens. You can bet you're Henry Cavill. Are you going to settle down when you can walk in the bar and say, there are 23 women in here, 20 of them I could probably sleep with. The other three are married, so they have to keep it on the down low. 
but I can sleep with them too. What are you going to do? You're going to start with your favorite pick. You're going to be like, oh, I want that one first. You shoot your shot. You fail, you go to the backup. You fail, you go to the backup. You're not going to fail too many times because you're a top 5%er guy. And what do you do? You go home with her. Maybe she plays a little hard to get the first night she doesn't put out. So you meet up for coffee and you go back and take her out for a nooner at your place. He doesn't have to try. He just gets laid. And that's what he wants because he doesn't want a long-term relationship with 43 or 44-year-old Yana or any of her friends. It's an easy hit it, quit it. What he's working for is he has to put in a little game and a little extra effort on the 25-year-old woman that's hot because she's got more options. Yana is easy pickings. Her friends are easy pickings for this guy. If you're that guy, are you going to settle down and get married to 43-year-old Yana? Are you going to be in a long-term relationship with Yana? Or are you just going to sleep with her because you know she's going to sleep with him? You're probably just going to sleep around. I mean, it's literally the male fantasy where you're like, I'm so hot, I can sleep with any woman without much effort. Yeah, she's only a six or a seven, but dude, I just have to text WYD, what are you doing? And she's like, nothing. He's like, come over. Boom, done. Three lines of a text. The next thing you know, he's emptying his nuts. He doesn't care. And all these women are, are dating the same dude. She says, basically, Sydney is one sordid hot mess of dating scenes right now, especially if you're over 30. Why? Because that's the wall. That's the wall that we talk about. That's what we talk about hitting the wall, Yana. It doesn't mean you're not hot. It doesn't mean you're not dateable. It means you want to walk into the club. You want to walk into the dating scene of the hot dudes. And there's a dorm in there. And he says, you are too old to date. He'll sleep with you, but you're too old to date. And she says, well, I can't come in the, the young club anymore. No, you're too old. That's hitting the wall. You've hit the wall of the club and the doorman is stopping you. She says, um, especially if you're over 30, because there's more chance you've dated the same guys as your friends. Talking to a friend today about it, she laughed and said, that's why she had to leave her country town. She realized she had dated all the good ones and so had her friends. She's, they're all sleeping with the same men. And, and then the men are like, I'll keep sleeping with you, but I'm not going to date you. And yeah, I've slept with all your friends and I'm not going to date them either. And so these women are like, well, I guess I have to, I have to date elsewhere because I've run out of men. Have they run out of men? No, 95% of the men are still there, all available, all on the market, all would love to have themselves a Yana. Why, why don't those women date those men? Because they're not the top 5% of men. They've run through the top 5% of men. Maybe they expanded to the top 10% of men. And they say, there's no more men left. Let's go. Still plenty of guys left. They're just invisible now. She says, um, she realized she had dated all the good ones. So at her friends, come to think of it, I've got a couple of spit sisters in the town I grew up in as well. Right, because you dated the high school football, you know, high school football quarterback or whatever. The, women do this from the time of high school all the way up through until they're old and they don't have any options left. She says, now for those of you who shacked up and not part, part of, for those of you shacked up and not part of this tribe, I sure, I'm sure you would be horrified to date someone who has dated your friend, but honestly, it's unavoidable especially in the Bondi bubble. Now, why is it unavoidable? Because there's only so many 5%ers to go around. With a fair chunk of people in their 30s and 40s already married, the dating pool is far smaller than it was in our 20s. So there's bound to be some crossover. In fact, one of my closest friends got engaged to my ex last year, and I'm chuffed for them. Because again, he's a top man. There, I don't care what town she's in. I mean, she's in Sydney, Australia, I guess. There's hundreds of thousands of men she's never even gone on a date on. But more importantly, doesn't even know exist. Why? Not the five percenters. Do you see the running theme that just keeps going on through these women's lives? She said, obviously, there are exceptions for this rule. Oh, wait. Uh, she says, a few years ago, I wouldn't have put uh, been put. <sighs> a few years ago, I probably wouldn't have been but the more you date in the city or town you currently reside in, the more you realize there's going to be more crossover. 
So rather than actively try and avoid dating people your friends may have passed in a nightclub years ago, you may as well just accept it. Instead of, oh, you dated my friend, I'm not going to date you. It's, I have not dated, my friend sampled you. I have not sampled you, but you are the man that I want to be with, so screw it. Uh, that other 95% of men, screw them. No, we're all going to sleep with the same 5%ers, so you may as well accept it. Get used to it, because this is, this is where we are now. She says, now, obviously, there are exceptions to the rule. For example, you shouldn't date the guy who broke your best friend's heart or any guy your friend is still crushing on. But if you meet a guy who just went on a few dates with one of your mates or had a one-night stand or passed in a pub, I think it's fair game. One-night stand right there. So, oh, you, you slept with Becky? Well, I'll sleep with you because who cares? Because what I really want is just to hook up with a super hot guy. It's not about relationships. She's not a dating coach. She just sleeps with anything that moves that's hot. And then when she's like, I want a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend just like the men that sleep with me. That is not going to happen because he's not going to settle for you when he can be smashing a 24-year-old smoke show next week. He's got the options. She says the key to successfully navigating this dilemma is communication. Yep, you're going to have to have a slightly awkward conversation with your friend if you want to start dating someone they've been with. And be prepared for them to give you a full reference check about the guy that may not necessarily be good, especially if the guy was the one to break it off or acted like a bit like an F-boy. But always go with your feelings. If it doesn't work out, at least you've got a mutual thing to bond over. And sure, they're all, they're all bonding over the same fact that they've all slept with the, the same dudes. dudes. Uh, right here, nobody calls this spit sister. We call them who is. The who. Let's see what this person said. Why is this not clicking on the link here? Let me see if uh, for some reason, uh, I don't know. Oh, come on, work with me here. Work with me. No, it's not going to let me see more. But they're, they're, you guys get it, man. Like, they know what they're doing. That's the irony. Let me put it over on this. They know what they're doing. They know they're only sleeping with the same dudes. They know they only can sleep with the same dudes. That they're not going to date those dudes, or those, more importantly, those dudes are not going to date them. They go smash, next, smash, next, smash, next. And they can because Yana and her friends allow it. They promote it. They, they do it themselves. These guys are never going to settle down. And you know what? When that guy finally has like, you know something? I've slept with hundreds, if not thousands of women. I want to have children and I want to have a family. Is he going to look for 44-year-old, no eggs, body count of 500, over-the-hill, wrinkly, saggy Yana Hawking? No. He's going to go to 24-year-old girl just getting out of college, hopefully super low body count that's kind of quiet and reserved. And he's going to be like, I'm rich, I'm tall, I'm good looking, I'm successful, I want a family. And maybe he has kids. Now, it doesn't mean that that girl doesn't divorce him and take half his resources. But that's who he's going to try to date. And it's, it's not that difficult because now a lot of young men, because of the female teachers and the single mom, they don't have any masculine characteristics, you know, given to them by a father or a good role model. Those men are kind of weak and effeminate. So women are gravitating to a little bit older guy, especially if he's good looking and, and strong willed because they say that is, I'm attracted to that. And yeah, he's a little older, but I got daddy things and, and he's got money and I'm down. And how do I know this? I'm 51 years old and I've never, I, I've never dated anyone in their forties. And most of the women I've dated were like low thirties at their highest and I haven't been single that long. You know, it's not like I've been single for 20 years. Uh, most recently, like the previous girl that I dated, I was 46 and she was 23 when we met, I think. And we dated for like a year and a half. So, you know, it just goes to show you, these women know what they're doing, but they refuse to see it or they refuse to accept it. And what will happen is all of them are just going to get folded up like origami 
Chad Thunderstroke is going to work his way through all of them. And then they're like, we've all been with the same men. I guess we need to move elsewhere because we won't lower our standards. She admits she won't lower her standards. She admits they all keep chasing the same men. She admits she, that they sleep with the same men. She admits that you just have to get used to it. None of them have ever said, I'm going to actually change who I'm dating, look for a different guy, and change my standards so I can find a boyfriend or husband or whatever. None of them in not one part of her or her friends in these articles say they're going to do that. They're, they're going to keep doing this until they're, uh, I don't know, until they're, they're beyond the age of even being smashable. And then they're going to look for, what, some 60 or 65-year-old retiree who's successful, and she's going to be the 58-year-old trophy wife? They, they're doing it, and they can't even see it. But we see it. And we're smart enough, smart enough to either know, I'm single because women are crazy, I'm single because I don't care enough to get into the market, or I'm single because I haven't finished improving myself to the point where I'm desirable like these guys are. Because as many times as we say, oh, he's probably tall and he's good looking and he's rich, and you don't need to be. You don't need to be. I am 5'6". I have, and, and I'm bald. I, and I've been bald since I was 28 years old. I've never had a problem dating. I've never had a problem getting laid. Why? I was in good shape. I'm not so much now because I got crap going on. I was in good shape, like six pack good shape. I'm funny. I can, I, what was the old expression? Someone, I could sell ice to an Eskimo, you know, or an Inuit, however you want to say it. I could sell ice to an Eskimo. That's what I've been told before. Why? Because I was in sales and I have the gift of gab and I can chat and I can talk and I can laugh it up. I can make, make people laugh. They have fun. You know, when you hang out with me, you probably have a good time. Um, even if it's at my expense. So, uh, and, and I'm okay looking good enough that I don't make people cringe and run away. What's my point? You can, you can become a five or 10 or 15 percenter. And it's, it's kind of easy, actually. You know, there's so many things you can do with facial hair and contacts and, and, you know, shaving your head and getting a tan on it. So it looks good hitting the gym and having some muscles and then go out and buy three to five outfits that are like designer jeans, three or $500 pair of shoes, uh, you know, uh, instead of a, a $20, I don't know, old Navy polo shirt, go buy a $150 silk polo shirt. Like women notice crap like that. Go get yourself an expensive watch. You can do things like, and, and then when you show up to the date and you're not in a fancy sports car, say, I knew I was going to be drinking, so I took an Uber. You know, even get the black car Uber that's more expensive. You can fake being successful. You can fake, and, and you can have a good personality and have muscles and, and be in good shape. And you can game the system. Maybe you won't be in the top 5%, but you'll be in the top 10 or 15 or 20% enough that you'll be able to have your fun. But the truth is you're not going to date these women either, number one, because you don't really have what they want, which is money and status and everything else. You don't really have that. You're kind of faking that you have that, but you're still going to be able to sleep with them. And they're not going to, you know, they're not going to like, and you're not going to want them. They're going to not going to want you because you don't have everything they really want. And you're not going to want them because they're, you know, they might be smoke shows for 43 years old. Uh, but, but if you're a 38 year old dude, you'll be like, I'll tap it, but I'm not going to date some chick that's like six years older than me that like wants to settle down. So you could get in the game and have just as much fun as some of these other guys are. But that's the problem with it, is no one's looking for the for real qualities in somebody. It's all shallow. Oh, he's muscular. He's good looking. I'll sleep with him. Oh, she's got a nice rack and she's pretty. I'll sleep with her because that's where we are with this stuff. And they admit it and they're fine with it. And so that's what it is. And that's why I think most men are single now. That's why they, they, they get into this stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. And, th and this is this is what... This is a good example of what I'm talking about. This is a, a post from Reddit. And she says, I'm unsure if I should tell my boyfriend this information. Uh, I've recently, I've recently gone official with a man I've been dating for a couple of months. He's kind, respectful, considerate. I really think he could be the one. Now, let me put a pin in that. He's kind, he's respectful and considerate. 
and he's probably decently successful. Does that mean she's hot for him? No, that doesn't, because otherwise she'd be like, he's tall, he's hot, he's rich, sex is amazing, whatever. Already we know before we read any further, he's the backup plan. He is the blue pill man. Okay. Now, many of you might say, hey, you know what? That's okay too, though. Like that's, there's no problems with that. Ah, but there is because the carnal nature of wanting to be, uh, to not settle and be with these hot guys, even when she's in a relationship, she can't help it. She says, something is eating at me. I wanted to build slowly with this man. So we didn't become intimate until after going exclusive. But between the first date and that point, I did see an old friends with benefit a couple of times. So why did she want to take things slow with this guy? Why did she want to not be intimate until being exclusive? Because she wanted to use her sexuality and the promise of sex to fool him into thinking she's a good girl, to fool him into thinking that she's a prize and, and to secure the relationship before giving sex. Now, there's nothing wrong with that traditionally. That's the way relationships have rolled. You meet a guy. It's 1955. You meet a guy. He meets a girl. They fall in love. They, they kiss after the third date. They, they go steady. They're holding hands. She wears his letterman jacket, whatever. Then they decide to go, you know, it's been six months. And, and in, you look in the movies from even the like 70s and 80s. There are dudes begging their girlfriends of six months to give them a little piece of the punani, right? But in the 50s, it was like, you're going to be at least engaged or heading that way. And, and of course, you vetted the person because you were together for six months or a year. And so what happened? She helped, made him hold out. He promised to, to you know, be a good husband and a good boyfriend and provide for them. And she came to the table as a virgin. He came with his resources. Boom, bada boom, bada bing, and a family is born. She fooled him the same way. I'm making him hold off for exclusivity. So he thinks I have a value and everything, but she can't, she can't keep it in her pants because her old friends with benefit is hot. Why isn't she dating the friends with benefits? Because either he's a scumbag and he's just good at, at sleeping with, or he said no to her, which is probably more likely. So she's like, I'll take whatever I can get. He won't give me the relationship, but he's hot and he'll sleep with me. So I'll take that. So she makes the boyfriend wait while she's getting, you know, Chad Thunderstroke on the side. She said, back then, I didn't think anything of sleeping with my old friends with benefits while making this other guy wait, as I wasn't exclusive. But I underestimated how much I would care for my boyfriend, and I feel almost like I've cheated on him. If she feels like it, then she did, because he's thinking it's exclusive or it's working in that direction. He thinks she's just getting to know him, so she's comfortable enough to share that with him. And in the meantime, she's getting her back blown out by another guy. So, of course, she feels like she cheated on him because she did. She led him astray. She said, have I done something wrong? Do I need to tell him? Will he end things with me? She says, update. There was mixed reactions here, but I got my gut told me I should tell my boyfriend. He said, sorry, I don't want to be in a relationship with someone who does that. Then he blocked me on everything. That is the correct move, sir. Good job. She knows what she was doing was wrong, but she wanted to secure the bag, secure the resources while having the top five percenter. Yana Hawking and these other women are of the same mindset. They want the top five percenters to sleep with and have fun with, even if they're all sleeping with the same dude. They probably all have the same STIs at this point in time. And, and ironically, they want him to be a boyfriend. They want him for the long term. But they will not settle down with him because just like this gal here in this story, that guy that she keeps sleeping with, the friends with benefits, he doesn't have to settle down for with anybody because he's got her and another and another and another and another that he sleeps with. And then the nice guy that says, you know something? Hey, she's making me wait. 
uh, you know, she's probably a good girl. That's really what I want. She seems to be, I'm going to have a relationship and then come to find out, you know, she's sleeping with other people and he, he breaks it off. He's like, I don't want to be with somebody like you. These women know what they're doing. Only the rest of us see what they're doing. They know they're doing wrong, but they keep like finding excuses for their bad behavior, for their, for how horrible and awful they are. And they keep doing it anyway. And, and they, they're like, I oh, would just share men, but why don't men want to be with us? They're going to, and this is the wall. This is the, it's too late for you. You you've done the damage. You're getting too old. The alpha widow is now installed in you to where you're perpetually looking for a man that will never date you and settle down with you. This girl does it too. They, they just, they can't see it. We see it. The world sees it when it comes to other people. But when it comes to Yana and her friends, they can't see it. They never will. They never will. That's the irony of this. They, I don't know. It, it's right in front of their faces. And they, it's just la, 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 la. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't. Uh, guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you're over here on YouTube, make sure to come over to Locals, man. Uh, I got a live stream tonight. I think I'm going to be doing uh, a sports ball team. I think Buffalo's playing tonight. So I'll probably do a live stream over there. And we just goof and talk about world events and we watch a little sports ball. And it's kind of like hanging out with the guys at the local pub. Uh, it's for supporters only. It's four bucks a month. Come on over, do supporters. I do like eight or 10 live streams on locals. I just don't do them on YouTube anymore because YouTube demonetizes them. And, and uh, I, I, there's two, I just, there's certain topics I can't talk about. We talk about everything over there. So come on over, join locals today. Links are down below. Come check it out. And we will see you in the next one.